Hare Krishna, Dandot Pram everyone. Uh, I hope like, okay, those who are here and those who are uh, those who are following the sessions, they are doing well. And uh, let us start with the Mangala Charan prayers. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya You can repeat after me. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Agyana Timirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshuran Militam Yena Tasma Shri Gurave Namaha Namam Vishnupadaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvishesha Shundavadi Paschatude Shatarine This is the Pranam Mantra of our beloved founder Acharya, Jagat Krishna Prabhupada. So we should we should memorize this prarthana and we should we should constantly remember, we should take blessings from Srila Prabhupada before we dive into the Bhagavad Gita. Because by the mercy of the pure devotee, the the divine knowledge gets revealed to us. Jai Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vashadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Mukam Karoti Vachalam Panghum Langhaite Girim Yatrupatam Te Shri Guru Dinatara Parmanam Hare Krishna. So, welcome everyone. We will start with our first chapter today of Bhagavad Gita. Let me go ahead and share my screen. So, we'll go into the Veda base and from here we'll do the study actually. So I, I hope you all have the um, Bhagavad Gita in front of you. If you can keep the Bhagavad Gita in front of you, that will be helpful as we move forward. Okay, so... So we'll start with this first chapter. The first chapter is called uh, is translated by Shri Prabhupada as observing the armies on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. Even before I go there, I want to give a brief introduction to the Bhagavad Gita. It is like uh, like for any context, uh, like as we are, uh, as you know, Bhagavad Gita is a conversation that is happening between Lord Shri Krishna and Arjuna. So, this, this Bhagavad Gita is part of the Mahabharata. And um, just prior to this, I just want to give a context here. Uh, so, here uh, the war is about to uh, start. Pandavas and Kauravas. Why have they come to this war? Because there are two brothers, Dhritarashtra and Pandu. They are two brothers. Somehow, Pandu, uh, Dhritarashtra is blind from his birth and he is blind um, materially, uh, that is, physically is blind as well as he is spiritually blind. Uh, why is he spiritually blind? Because um, he, um, he he has hundred sons. Pandu has five sons: Yudhishthir, Bhim, Arjun, Nakul, and Sahadev. So, because Dhritarashtra was blind, Pandu was the Pandu was ruling the kingdom. 
okay and the eldest son and there is a lot of history behind that but i'm just trying to go into the crux of it so in their next generation the earliest child is yudhishthir maharaj so you pandu uh, pandu died at an early age and prithrashtra was uh, he was the only heir actually and he was looking after this kingdom but he has this he wanted his sons to be the king so in the vedic custom what happens is if a king has to be uh, if a king has to be uh, if the next generation of the king has to take over then the eldest son becomes the king and yudhishthir was the eldest however dhritarashtra did not want yudhishthir to be, become the king he wanted his son that is duryodhan to become the king and and in this case what happens as a result of that is duryodhan uh, from the very early age he was very envious of the pandavas of the five sons of pandu and he tries multiple ways to to actually um, kill them in a very early age duryodhan tries to uh, while their children while they are playing duryodhan tries to kill bhim by poisoning he was he always considered bhim to be a threat because they they are both very powerful and because of that like okay when he, he tries to uh, poison his food and bhim was very fond of bhim's other name is rikodar rikodar means like okay, one who has who has a uh, who can um i'm not getting the exact meaning but basically one who who has a very big very enormous amount of diet so that is the that, that is where it translates to actually so, and and uh, when he was poisoned after that like okay um bhim becomes unconscious and he was put in a river actually okay and he as he was put into the river rather lake so bhim bhim goes underneath and when he goes underneath like uh, vasuki the he lands into the snake kingdom there the snakes are biting him and when the snakes are biting him by the biting of the snake the poison which he has been which he has taken that kind of nullifies and bhim regains back his senses so during that time uh, he is being taken to the king there vasuki and then vasuki understands asks him who are you and he tells he reveals his identity that i am maharaj pandu's son and uh, vasuki says oh okay that is it and and at that time he is offered um he is offered some nectar so you know like this nectars are stored in pots actually and in this in the we are in earth and below the earth just like we have patal there are many there are seven different planets and like so there is one planet which is for the serpents snakes and in that the snakes store all this nectar and this nectar is brought in 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 a pot to him and generally they take little little portions of nectar but bhim has so much his diet is so huge that he consumes one entire pot of that nectar <laughs> and by consuming that he becomes as powerful as 10000 elephants so long story short when he comes out he he is he is much more powerful his vitality has increased and that's bhim now and so similarly just like this incident there are many other incidents when they try to kill the pandavas they uh, duryodhan tries to poison uh sorry duryodhan tries to kill the pandavas in varnavrat where he makes a house he makes a palace of lac and shells okay and all the elements which are easily um, consumable by fire so as the fire is set up okay they can die easily but then somehow the the pandavas are saved because vidura 
gets to know and he passes a message secretly to them in a confidential language, in a cryptic language, so that they can come out. So somehow or other, they are saved through this, and then, and then there is this. Uh, uh, there are numerous instances, but I am just trying to cite if only a few of them, and then uh, they try to arrange for this dice game, and in the dice game, okay, because Pandavas they were always happy with what they have. They were given uh, when when they became uh, when uh, when they asked Leoki okay, what area they can rule, they were given half of the uh, kingdom, but Duryodhan was always envious, and so he arranged for this dice game, and Dhritarashtra constantly, because he was spiritually so blind, he was constantly supporting his envious son, and in this dice game, uh, by cheating, the Pandavas were defeated, and uh, they tried to take everything away from the Pandavas, not just that, they they were trying to strip uh, Pandava's wife Draupadi, who is the most chaste wife, like, okay, strip her naked like okay. that was their attempt. But Krishna protected her and supplied her with unlimited amount of sari. Now, after all this dice game, like, okay, when when everything was over, the Pandavas have lost the kingdom. Okay, they are back to they are back they are banished from there. As a result of the loss of this, they are banished for 14 years, out of which 13 years um, they are supposed to be in uh, uh, 13 years they are in forest, but the 14th year, the last one year, they have to be in incognito. And it, within that year, the condition was put like within the incognito year, if they are somehow identified, then they have to again repeat their 14 years. So, and Duryodhan tries all means to identify them. But somehow he fails and the Pandavas are now back from their exile. And when they are back from their exile, they demand their kingdom. And Duryodhan is not willing to give anything. And, and when Duryodhan does not give anything, so, the Pand so Krishna, acting as the messenger of the Pandavas, he's, he goes there trying to see, to negotiate, and Yudhishthira Maharaj says that okay, if they can give only five villages, then that is also okay with us. And Duryodhan says, like, what to talk about five villages? I am not even willing to give that much land, which is which is there under the under a pin. Okay, if you can imagine, like, okay, if you have a pin under that, how much land will be there? It is nothing. A person cannot be there. Forget about a person. Even a finger cannot be there. Okay, so that much land also Duryodhana is not willing to part. So, uh, so based based on this, it is determined that there has to be a war that has to be fought, and we are at that stage of the war. So let's now. This is to give a summary. There is a. It's a very long story in the Mahabharata. And I just tried to summarize like, okay, the key concepts, like, okay, how, how the Pandavas and Kauravas, like, they were very much uh, of different nature, Duryodhan being very envious. And at the same time, Yudhishthira and brothers were very, very, they were very favorable. They were always looking for the benefit of each and every one. And they are, they are devotees. The biggest thing is they are devotees of the Lord Krishna. So, with that being said, let's start the first verse in the Bhagavad Gita. Dhritarashtra vacha dharma kshetre kuru kshetre samaveta yutsavaha mamakaha pandavas chaiva kim akurvata sanjaya. So, Dhritarashtra said, O oh Sanjay, after my sons and the sons of Pandu assembled, in the place of pilgrimage of Kurukshetra, desiring to fight, what did they do? Now, very now, who is this Sanjay? Sanjay is the secretary of Dhritarashtra, and Sanjay is also uh, he is a disciple of Shila Vyasdev. Okay, so 
because he has served Vyasadeva very nicely and pleased him. So Vyasadeva gave him a benediction. Like he gave him a special siddhi. He gave him a power. And what can he do by that power? If he if he focuses or if he has to look at any event that is occurring at any particular place, he just tries to focus. He can just, being at a remote place, he can see that. It's very similar to these days we do this video call like we are doing a Zoom call right now. You are all at different places and I am also at a different place. But I can see you. I can see Lalukapu. I can see my parents. I cannot see <laughs> Okay. So, but through the... And you can, you can all see me. So, through the medium of Zoom, we are able to see this. And Sanjay was also able to see... Sanjay had the capability to see what is happening. So... It is just like he had a television set, but in those in those days, this was all happening by the mantras, by the mantra siddhi. Okay, there was no there was no need for internet or Wi-Fi connection or the Zoom and other things. Okay, by the by his meditation, he was able to see that was the power he was given, and because of this, even though Dhritarashtra was blind, Sanjay, uh, he was narrating what is happening in the battlefield of Kurukshetra. Now, both parties, the Kauravas and the Pandavas, they have assembled to fight. The fight is just about to begin. And at that time, Dhrishtarashtra asked this question that, Oh, Sanjay, after my sons and the sons of Pandu, they have assembled in this place of pilgrimage, Dharmakshetra. This, this Kurukshetra is a Dharmakshetra at the Kurukshetra at the place of pilgrimage at Kurukshetra, desiring to fight. What did they do? Now you will note here that he is saying that, okay, after my sons and the sons of Pandu, so he is discriminating, okay, that between my sons and sons of Pandu, when they have assembled, that means, even though he was, after the death of Pandu, he was actually responsible for the entire family, which included the sons of Pandu, but he always looked at them like, okay, differently. He, he was more favorable to his own sons and he was unfavorable to the sons of Pandu. Okay, that shows his selfish intent. Okay, so, and why is he asking this question? So, see, actually, if you see, uh, if oh Sanjay, after my sons and the sons of Pandu have assembled, desiring to fight, what did they do? Now, if you ask this question, like, okay, oh, uh, they have gone to the restaurant, what did they do? I mean, obviously, they will be eating there. If they have gone to the library, what did they do? <laughs> obviously, they, they will be taking some books there or will be depositing some books there. So, why is he asking this? Because he, Dhritarashtra is thinking that, okay, oh, they, have, they are there in this place, in this Dharmakshetra. Okay, Dharmakshetra, Kurukshetra. They are there in this place of pilgrimage. They are in this sacred land. Did that? Did they? Did my sons change their mind after this? The after that place had an influence in their mind. Okay. Did that happen, or are they fighting? He he desperately wanted that the fight should happen, and he wanted that the that the sons of Pandu uh, uh, and and his sons they fight. That was his intent. So that is why he is asking this particular question. Uh, he he Dhritarashtra wanted that his sons get the they are they are able to come victorious in that particular fight. That was his desire because he wanted his sons to to get the kingdom. But at the same time, he did not want that the Dharmakshetra, the, the holy place of Kurukshetra, has any influence on his sons' minds, and they should not change their mind and come back without fighting. They should not make any compromise. That is the reason why Dhritarashtra is asking this question. Now, let's see what happens next. Sanjay Vacha Rishwa Tu Pandvanikam Vyudham Durihodhanas Tada Acharyam Upasangamya Raja Vachanam Abravit. Sanjay said, O king, after looking over the army arranged in military formation by the sons of Pandu, King Duryodhan went to his teacher and spoke the following words. 
So Sanjay is saying, Sanjay is able to see what is happening in the battlefield. So Sanjay is saying, Duryodhan, he is, he is looking over the army arranged. He is doing an assessment there. Okay, how the army is arranged. Okay, he is looking at the enemy's army. And after this, he Duryodhan went to his teacher. Who is his teacher? His teacher's name is Dronacharya. And then he spoke the following words. So now let's see what Duryodhan, what kind of assessment he is he's doing here. Okay. So here, so the next verse here, Duryodhan is saying, Pashaitam Pandu Putra Nam Acharya Mahitam Chamum Vyudham Drupada Putrena Tava Sishena Dhimata. Oh, my teacher, behold the great army of the sons of Pandu, so expertly arranged by an intelligent disciple, the son of Drupad. Okay, so he's telling. It is telling Dronacharya that behold the great army of the sons of Pandu, so expertly arranged by your intelligent disciple, the son of Drupad. So the son of Drupad is Drishtadyumna. So here you have to see one thing. Okay, this Duryodhan is a he is trying to incite anger in uh, in in uh, Dronacharya, his teacher. Okay. Why, why does he do that? So there is one small history behind that. So let's quickly go to that. So Dronacharya and Drupad, okay, they were childhood friends, okay, and and they would go to the same ashram, okay, they would go to the same teacher. So they did their schooling, everything together, and they were best of the friends. And Dronacharya was came he was a brahmana he came from a, a materially poor family but he was a brahmana he was very spiritually spiritually he was very up, uplifted okay but at the same time drupad came from a he was king he was a rajkumar he was a prince okay and in future course of time he would become a king so during their child during his school days drupad told that okay oh dronacharya see we are best of the friends so now we will be separating from here. But please do remember that in future, if there is anything you want, please come and tell me and I will be more than happy to, to, be, uh, to assist you with that. Because we are friends. Whatever belongs to me is just yours. Okay. So something like this. Now, uh, as, they, as they grew up, uh, they, they advanced Drupad became king. Dronacharya, Dronacharya as a Brahmana would be uh, doing his work. But then poverty struck Dronacharya's family. And he had, he and his wife and his son, his poverty became so bad that at one point of time, he was not able to feed his family. So his wife suggested that, okay, you had once mentioned that you had this friend, this big king, Drupad. Why don't you go ahead and ask him for some help? So Dronacharya, with uh, he sets out. He goes to the he goes to the palace of Drupad, and when they both meet, at that time, uh, Drupad, uh, Dronacharya tells that okay, please tell King Drupad that his friend Dronacharya has come. So Drupad, by the time he has become a king, he is the he becomes. Uh, he's a very popular, I mean, he's obviously materially very opulent and Dronacharya comes like, okay, he's in a very simple cloth, okay, because he's very stuck with poverty, okay, and as as the guard comes and says, okay, your friend Dronacharya has come, this, uh, sometimes what happens is in the most materially opulent condition, we are very much inflicted by pride. So Dronacharya, as he sees Drupad, he's, he sees that okay, he's of a different level. Materially, he's, he's just a beggar. He looks at like that. And Dronacharya says, okay, Drupad, do you remember me? I'm your old friend. Okay, we studied together. Okay, and uh, I, I was coming here, okay, uh, if you could, uh, if you could be of some help to me. 
Okay. So you had earlier told that okay, I can approach you at any point of time. So something, something around these lines, Drupad uh, Dronacharya is reminding him. And Drupad clearly he he says that okay, I am not your friend, okay. And he insults Dro Dronacharya very badly. And he says that if you want to beg something from me, you can say so because you are a Brahmana. And Dronacharya gets very agitated because he, he takes this insult very badly. And he uh, he thinks that okay, he has to take a revenge for this. And when and right after that, okay, Dronacharya gets the service for training the Pandavas. So when the Pandavas and the Kauravas, he, he trains the Pandavas and Kauravas. So when the Pandavas and Kauravas are trained, he tells them that, okay, you should go. And uh, what is the... So at the end of the teaching, right, they're supposed to give some Guru Dakshina. So Dronacharya asks Guru Dakshina that, okay, you should bring Drupad to me. Okay, just tie him in handcuffs and bring him to me. So there is there is a fight. So initially the Kauravas go, but they are unable to do anything. So the Pandavas go and like, okay, Arjun, he ties Drupad as Dronacharya had expected, just like an animal, and he brings him. And Dronacharya, uh, Dronacharya, what he does is he tells, he reminds Drupad that, okay, see, um, he, he now tells her, okay, so fine, you have been, um, you have been captured by me, but I am not like you. I'll give you half the kingdom. You have half the kingdom and I'll have half the kingdom. So Drupad is very much insulted because as a Kshatriya, which, Drup which Drupad was, Kshatriya means one who is, one who is always fighting. He's in the, um, um, they're in the administrative, uh, he's, he's a king, right? So they, they do this administration. So as an administration, if they lose in a battle, it's better to get killed rather than to be uh, given uh, something in charity. It is the Brahmana's duty to take charity. So Drupad is very much insulted with this. Okay. And as a result of that, Drupad does a big sacrifice. And in that sacrifice, he gets, uh, he, he does this sacrifice to beget a son who can kill Dronacharya. That was his purpose for the sacrifice. But from that sacrifice comes Drishtadyumna, who will who is destined to kill Dronacharya. And from that same sacrifice comes Draupadi. So Draupadi does not have a natural birth. She is actually the goddess of fortune, our scriptures say. And um, she is born of fire. Uh, so that is why she is also called Yagnaseni. So now, now, uh, so Dronacharya, Dronacharya knows that Drupad has this son who will kill him. But being a Brahmana, this uh, this son of Drupad, he approaches Dronacharya to get education in military training, to get training in how to use the arms and ammunition. And Dronacharya, being a Brahman, he trains Drishtadyumna, that is Drupad's son, who is who in future is going to kill him. So you can see the nature of the Brahmana is so, shown like, okay, it's not like today's age, like, okay, oh, oh, you are going to kill me, uh, come on, <laughs> how can I train you? But they're the Brahmanas, they were very, they had this higher nature actually. Um, he, he trained Drishtadyumna and and so now, coming back to this particular verse, in this verse, what is what uh, our uh, uh, our guy Duryodhan is reminding? <laughs> uh, he is reminding Dronacharya that see what you did, you trained this um, Drishtadyumna, the the son of Drupad, and see now the army of the sons of Pandu is expertly arranged by your intelligent disciple. By saying intelligent disciple, the son of Drupad, he is reminding that okay, you are the one who trained him. Okay. So he's just trying to incite that and by taking the name of Drupad, he's trying to incite the uh, violence within Dronacharya. 
that is that is how political and diplomatic Duryodhana is. So now let's go to the next verse, verse four. Here, uh, Dronacharya is uh, sorry, Dur Duryodhan is telling about who are the fighters actually. Here in this army are many. I'm not reading through all this shlokas, but let's go through the content actually. Here in this army are many heroic bowmen equal in fighting to Bhim and Arjun. Uh, great fighters like Yudhana, Virat and Drupad. I'll read this one. This is important actually. Atrasura Maheshwasa Bhima Arjuna Samayudhi Yudhano Viratascha Drupadascha Maharatha So here uh, here uh, Duryodhan is telling that okay, who are those great fighters okay, in the opposite party. And in this he uses one uh, uses one term Maharathi. So, so there are uh, you know infantry. Infantry means those soldiers who fight on their foot. Okay. So typically one soldier who fights on foot can fight with another soldier on foot on the opposite side. Okay. But then there is one class which is higher than that. That higher class is rat, Rathi. Rathi means the, those soldiers which fight on chariots. Okay, so typically one chariot sol, one chariot fighter can one Rathi fighter who is on chariot okay, can fight with another Rathi who is on chariot on the other side. Okay, and one Rathi that is one chariot chariot fighter can actually can actually fight with he is competent to fight with 1,000 soldiers who are on foot. Okay. So, that is the capability of a Rathi. Now, who is a... Here we are saying about these are Maharathis. Okay. These are, these names like okay, Yudhana, Virat and Drupad who are on the Pandava side, they are Maharathis. Maharathi means one... He is also a chariot fighter, but being on the chariot, they can fight with 1,000 Rathis. Okay, they are chariot fighters and this Maharathi is so competent that they can fight with 1000 Rathi who are again chariot fighters. Okay, is that concept clear? And then there is Ati Rathi. Ati Rathi means they are also chariot fighters but they can fight with 1000 Maharathis. So it is like that. So the lowest is the foot soldiers then above that is Rathi then above that is Maharathi and above that is Ati Rathi and Bhishma is an, is an Ati Rathi. <laughs> he is so powerful. Then, then it says, "Drishtaketu uh, chekita chekita na kashi rajascha viryavan purujis kuntu kunti bhojascha shaypyascha narapungava." There are also great powerful fighters like Drishtaketu chekita na kashi raj purujit kuntu bhoj and shaypya. Durudhan is talking about the the fighters in the Pandava side. There are mighty, next verse, text 6. There are the mighty Yudhamanyo, the very powerful Uttamaj, okay, the son of Subhadra and the sons of Draupadi. So, all these warriors are great chariot fighters. He's going one by one, okay. And then, uh, then he says, but for your information, he's telling Dronacharya, oh, oh Gurudev, for your information, O oh best of the Brahmanas, let me tell you about the captains who are especially qualified to lead my military force. Okay. So he's still talking about, now he's talking about, he did an assessment of the Pandavas. Now he's talking about who are the ones who are on his side. Okay. So then he says, Bhavan Bhishmascha Karnascha Kripascha Samitim Jaya Ashwatthama Vikarnascha Saumadattis Tathaivacha Now he says, there are personalities like you, Guru Maharaj, like you. Okay, first he is glorifying his Gurudev. Okay. Bhishma Dev, Karna, Kripa, Kripacharya, Ashwatthama is there. Okay, Vikarna is there. And the son of Saumadatta called Bhurishrava, who are always victorious in battle. They are always victorious. Then he says, Text, next, next text, there are many other heroes who are prepared to lay down their lives for my sake. 
all of them are well equipped with different kind of weapons and all are experienced in military science here see in in this text i'll read this particular text anyaja bahava shura mad arthe tyakta jivitah nana shastra praharana sarve yuddha visharada they are all experienced in military science okay but here duryodhan makes he makes a comment there are many other heroes who are prepared to lay down their lives for my sake so in so it's it tells this uh, he he is trying to say this in a way that uh, see they are so they are so active but here he, he puts this in a negative way that way he is also predicting what the future is going to happen okay he puts that thing like okay, they are eventually they are going to all lay down their lives for duryodhan's sake <laughs> and then he does a comparison so he says next text our strength is immeasurable and we are perfectly protected by grandfather bhishma whereas the strength of the pandavas carefully protected by bhima is limited so you can see duryodhan is saying that okay our strength is aparyaptam tad asmakam balam bhishma bhi rakshitam paryaptam tva idam etesham balam bhima bhi rakshitam our strength is aparyaptam immeasurable because uh, like we have so much army and we are perfectly protected by grandfather bhishma as is mentioned he is is counting on bhishma because bhishma is an atirathi okay whereas the strength of the pandavas okay they are is calling it as paryaptam they are limited okay they are like nothing just because it is uh, it is protected by bhima so this is again is envy for bhima is coming out through this okay that he he is thinking that okay pandavas means nothing like okay they just uh, bhima is bhima is there so he he has very limited strength okay and what will he do let's let's go to the next one very important thing to note here so he is downplaying whatever is the strength of the pandavas now uh he's is is thinking that okay he has he has everything he uh, he has all the strength here so we should carefully assess like, okay what are the different uh, what are the different struggles that we have to go through but here he is thinking that, okay okay he is carefully protected and he is just thinking okay on that other part only bhima is there okay they are all very limited paryapta then next one text 11 all of you must now give full support to grandfather bhishma dev as you stand at your right respective strategic points of entrance into the flanks of the army so he is saying that okay oh, grand, our bhishma dev should be carefully protected because he is he is he is the he is a critical point like, okay just so that like okay because he has glorified uh, the uh, bhishma dev he has glorified uh, dronacharya now he is thinking that okay he should tell about uh, he should tell the other people also that okay uh, you should carefully protect these guys now there is an important thing to understand here what is that important thing um important thing is here he is he whom is he talking to can anyone tell that whom is duryodhan talking to bishma okay uh who's let me just see here you can unmute and say yeah, the answer was right okay yes uh shama krunama is mata ji saying bhishma did someone say something else dronacharya yes dronacharya yes nandini priya mata ji that is right duryodhan is talking to dronacharya here okay and he is talking to dronacharya one very very important consideration over here is if you see here i'll just display this he is telling all of you must now give full support to grandfather bhishma as you stand at your respective strategic point of entrance into the flanks of the army so what he is doing indirectly is he is instructing dronacharya now this is an offense one should never instruct his gurudev 
so we should always be very submissive to our to our spiritual master whether it's shiksha guru diksha guru we should always be submissive now duryodhan is in terms of while making an assessment what he does is he goes ahead and gives an instruction actually to his uh, to dronacharya okay okay all of you must now give support <laughs> that is that is dronacharya's business actually to figure out what he has to do because his position is he is gurudev okay uh, he uh, we should always take a submissive position okay when we are near our gurudev okay just with our hands folded okay and we should try to listen okay so in our uh, just to give you a short context here our in our uh, when mahaprabhu is doing his leela and at that time our our acharya shiromani uh shila rupa goswami and shila sanatan goswami when they go to meet mahaprabhu mahaprabhu is krishna himself but when they go to meet him they put uh they put grass they put straw in their uh, in their uh, uh, mouth actually not mouth basically underneath their teeth just to indicate that when we are in front of our guru we should not be speaking we should try to listen to hear we should try to hear and we should be very submissive um that is that is the that is the essence over here so duryodhan as i mentioned he is doing an offense here like next verse then bhishma the grand valiant grandsire of the kuru dynasty the grandfather of the fighters blew his conch shell very loudly making a sound like the roar of a lion giving duryodhan jay giving duryodhan joy okay i'll read this verse tasya sanjaya anam harsham kuru vriddha pitamah simhanadam vinadyochay shankham dadmau pratapavan so simhanad so just like a roar of a lion bhishma like okay now duryodhan like okay he is uh, he is Uh, like he's uh, uh, when he all, he does this all talking that dona shariya tries to 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 inspire him like okay, he he uh, blows his valiant uh, he makes a huge roaring sound of his uh, uh, conscious just like a lion, just like the roar of a lion okay now what does what is happening next next verse after that the conscious drums bugles trumpets and horns were all suddenly sounded and the combined sound what to multi so when when goravas when they heard this right they are all party like they all beat all their conch shell drums bugles trumpets horns they were all they all start making sound so you will see like these days also like now whenever there are elections right they will go with all their trumpets these that like okay, they will have this loud speaker <laughs> and they will go with marching for this right because they want they they want to make sure that okay that attention is there here in this case because it is a war right in in this war right with this conchal bugles trumpets they are trying to create fear in the minds of their enemies next text on the other side tata shwete hare yukte mahati shandane sthitau madhava pandavas chaiva divyai devau shankhau pradad matau on the other side both lord krishna and arjuna stationed on a great chariot drawn by white horses sounded their transcendental conscious so when when uh, bhishma blew his conch shell what was that sound like does anyone remember roaring of a lion roaring of a lion and here when krishna and arjuna are blowing the conch shell at that time it is being said they they sounded their transcendental conch shell divya shankha divya means divyam divine okay so here there is a very important thing to understand from here so when uh, so roaring of a lion and here we have divya shankha one is material another is spiritual very important thing to understand see materially 
many times many things may look like very sleek very smart very uh, like uh, very opulent okay and in the material world if someone judges oh this is like fantastic i did this that like okay they, they may be like this uh, we describe it like this right okay oh this was fantastic like, okay uh, materially opulence different types of opulence it could be beauty it could be um, wealth it could be anything for that matter so but when it comes to spiritual the spiritual is not in the material platform itself okay it is far beyond that okay and um and that is why it is being distinguished here okay that this is they blew their transcendental conscious anything which is connected to krishna is divya uh, it's transcendental So bhakti, that if you see, is transcendental. Next verse, text fifteen. Panchajanyam rishi kesho deva dattam dhananjaya poundram dadmo mahashankam bhima karma vrikodara. So now it is here. Uh, we are naming okay in this particular verse. Who? What are their? What are their? Uh, what are the names of the conscious? Lord Krishna. blew his conchal named panchajanya arjun blew his the devdatta and bhima the voracious eater okay and performer of herculean tasks okay <laughs> blew his terrific con conchal called poundra so there is one thing i was telling about this material and transcendental in the spiritual world everything is a person see in material world stone is non living but in the spiritual world the stone that is the dust which is under krishna's lotus feet that also has a has a uh, that also has life that is also a person so this panchajanya okay that is also a person that is krishna's conchal that is why it has name here panchajanya devdatta and bhima's conchal poundra okay so this is this is very this is something very interesting to know does anyone remember i want to ask one question does anyone remember when we were remember when we were reading the introduction to bhagavad gita in that there are five types of relationship we can have with krishna what are those does anyone remember that yeah go ahead kaku hi yeah oh that five is one is the uh, 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 disciple then madhurya lila then your uh, uh, then your sokha that is friendship and like that <laughs> then okay. i am not a yes. so that is shanta shanta means in the neutral state we can have a relationship with krishna okay another is dasya state dasya ah. means as a servant hanuman ji is in the dasya state see the shanta state in the neutral state is is referring to these these things like okay basically the stone okay uh, which is uh, the flute that krishna's flute that is there it is in shantaras okay then dasya is hanuman ji is is lord lord ram ram is uh, servant of lord ram ji then there is sakha sakha means friend arjun arjun is the friend of lord krishna okay then there is um vatsalya vatsalya is yashoda mai yashoda mai is in the parental love and then there is madhurya madhuri is in the conjugal relationship the gopis of prindavan they are in the madhurya ras and the best among the gopis is our very dear most shrimati radharani so so uh, these are the various states so why i wanted to touch upon this shanta ras so this conchal okay it is in the shantaras then next text text 16 to 18 we'll read the translation king yudhishthir the son of kunti blew his conchal the ananta vijay and nakul and shahadev blew the shughosh and mani pushpa the great archer of king king the great archer the king of kashi the great fighter shikhandi drishtadumna virat the unconquerable satyaki drupad 
the sons of Draupadi and others, O king, such as the mighty armed son of Subhadra, all breathe their respective conscience. So then next text, text 19, the blowing of the sea, as, as we are going through this, in your mind, picture it like as it is happening there. The blowing of this different conscience became uproarious, vibrating both in the sky and on the earth. It shattered the heart of the sons of Dhritarashtra. So, so as these councils are growing, it created innumerable fear in the heart of the sons of Dhritarashtra. Then, then now we'll come to text number 20. Atha Vevasthitan Drishtva Dharta Rashtran Kapidvaja Pravritre Shastra Sampate Dhanur Udyama Pandava Rishikesham Tadavakyam Idam Aha Mahipate. Translation. See, all these translations are by our most beloved founder, Acharya, Jagat Gushla Prabhupada. Shla Prabhupada ki Jai. At that time, Arjun, the son of Pandu, seated in the chariot. And in which chariot he is sitting? That bears the mark, bearing the flag marked with Hanumanji took up his bow and prepared to shoot his arrows. O king, after looking at the sons of Dhritarashtra drawn in military array, Arjun then spoke to Krishna, Lord Krishna these following words. Okay, who is narrating this? Does anyone remember? Sanjay. Sanjay is narrating this. So Sanjay, Sanjay. is giving the commentary, running commentary to Dhritarashtra that at that time the sons of Pandu seated in the chariot bearing the flag marked with Hanuman took up his bow and prepared to shoot his arrows. O king, after looking at the sons of Dhritarashtra drawn in military array, Arjun then spoke, the, spoke to Lord Krishna these words. So here, there is, a, there is an important thing here. So Arjuna's chariot is marked with what? Is marked with Hanumanji's flag. Okay, so the flag has Hanumanji. So there is there are two instances actually uh, which goes to this. Uh, there is one instance which is in Mahabharata inst it itself. I'll share one of this and then we'll stop here. Uh, we'll carry from uh, we'll uh, we'll start from here in our next in our next session. So our um, in the in the commentary our Acharya. Shila Baladev Vidya Bhushan, uh, whose disappearance was just last week, actually. So he has commented that um, in the in the Dwapar Yuga, like when Arjuna was uh, once he was taking a walk, actually, and uh, he was going by the bank of the river, and that time he saw the Vanaras. So Vanaras is not. Uh, monkeys. Vanaras are actually evolved um, evolved state actually. Many people mistake Vanaras as monkeys. So he saw they are like apes. They can talk. They are very uh, well versed in the scriptures. They are very they are very high. They are very evolved intelligence actually. And they are very powerful. Vanaras are very powerful. Uh, much more powerful than human beings. So Arjun came, he saw this Vanaras. And so uh, these Vanaras like okay, they they also saw Arjun and they introduced that okay, we are the Vanaras. You know, Arjun, uh, like when they introduced themselves, so the Vanaras said, okay, we have been we are we are the same Vanaras who have actually fought the battle with Lord Ram. So Arjun was very happy to hear this. And uh, he says that um, is it? You know what? I had this question okay, that was lingering in my mind. Uh, I wanted to ask you this. See, um, uh, I am... Uh, why did Lord Ram have to uh, need the monkeys? Or uh, why did Lord Ram need the uh, Vanaras actually to do this uh, bridge? Because I am also a Dhanurdhar. I am also an archer. With my bow and arrow, okay, we can, with my arrows, I can create a bridge uh, which which can hold so much weight actually. 
So, and uh, that is, uh, I mean, there would be no problem. Why did Lord Ram have the, uh, have these, have all these Vanaras do this? So this Vanar comes, so one of these Vanar comes back and says, it comes out and says, okay, you know what? That is because we are Vanaras, right? We are very restless. Okay, we always keep jumping here and there. Like We need something to do and we need to keep ourselves occupied. And we are very strong and powerful also. See, if Lord Ram would have created that, then like, okay, we would be jumping here and there and the bridge might break. And that way we'll, and if Lord Ram would be doing then because we'll not be occupied, we are very naughty also. So that is why. So Arjun, he says, like, okay, Are, I am only a mortal person. Okay, I can only make bridge that powerful. And Arjun was very offended by hearing that. Lord Ram, like, okay, if he makes that bridge, like, it, it can stand against the test of time. So uh, the Vanar said, no, no, uh, that's not the case. See, if you really believe so, you can you can try that. See, like uh, you can try to build a bridge and then uh, let's see. So Arjun says, okay, now there is, <laughs> uh, 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 he said, okay, now there is, you can make this bridge like, okay, and then we can, uh, we'll try to see if that is helpful. Uh, if we are able to break that. So Arjun immediately with the power of his mantra, he creates a bridge. He knows he is the best of the archer actually. He makes this bridge and the bridge is ready in no time. And uh, this Vanar, what he comes, he, he comes near the bridge and he says, okay, let me try to see. He says, Jai Shri Ram. And he puts just his toe on the bridge like this. That's it. He just presses it very lightly with his toe. And as soon as he does that, the entire bridge collapses. And Arjun, he is he's astonished. He's like, what happened? And uh, he has absolutely no idea like, what has happened. So then at that time, Arjun says, okay, um, this one asks him that, okay, what happened? See, um, Arjun is surprised. This Vana did not have to do anything. He just pressed with his stone. That's it. So then, um, this um, Arjun comes back and he says that, okay, so he feels very dejected and uh, he says, that, okay, now I think all my, whatever education that I had of the archery, that is uh, I could not do much. I should enter into fire. So Arjun is dejected and he is uh, he's about to enter, enter into a fire. Suddenly a Brahmana comes there and he says, what happened? Why are you crying? And Arjun says, okay. Uh, he tells about the, he narrates the entire incident. And then he says, uh, this is what happened. So the Brahmana says, okay, uh, See, I don't believe, like, uh, Arjun, what you are saying is, why don't you do it again? And uh, why don't, oh, Vanar, why don't you also try to do this again? Okay, that way you will have one uh, Sakshi. You will have like, one person who is actually observing it. Okay, and then I'll be your Sakshi. So why don't, Arjun, you build this bridge. I will go underneath the bridge and I will try to see what is happening. Okay, all right. Arjun also is happy like okay, he gets a second chance. So Arjun again does this mantra, puts the he creates the bridge <laughs> instantly. Bridge is ready. And then uh, the and then now it's the Vanar's turn. So the Vanar comes back, he says, Jai Shri Ram. He presses his, again, he presses the toe there. As soon as he does that, this time the, nothing happens to the bridge. The bridge is is just unchanged. <laughs> it did not even move. So Arjun is surprised. What happened? And the Vanar is also surprised. What happened? So then, uh, then now this Vanar comes back and he introduces himself. You know, Arjun, I have to introduce myself. I am the mighty powerful Hanuman. And now I am going to jump on this bridge. Okay, so then now he takes all his full force 
and he jumps on this bridge. Jai Shri Ram! And he flungs onto this bridge. <laughs> the bridge does not even shake a little bit. Okay. <laughs> the bridge is completely, it is unshaken. So now the, the Vanar gives a third try. Jai Shri Ram! He goes higher up and he jumps into this. Nothing happens. The bridge is intact there. So now, then uh, Hanumanji says, okay, let's go and see what is happening below the bridge. Okay. So there, when they go there, they see that this, in the guise of the Brahman, it is Lord Ram who is standing there. So it is like this. Hanumanji sees his, uh, his uh, master, Lord Ram, and Arjun sees his his friend, his Satha and his his lordship, Krishna, standing there. Both are seeing the same personality, but both are seeing in the form that they recognize with. And his hands are bleeding. Ram's hands are bleeding. Arjun sees Krishna's hands are bleeding. And both start crying. Oh, my dear Lord, what happened? What did you do? Your hands are bleeding. So then, at that time... <laughs> This personality, who is that same Supreme Personality of Godhead, Arjun is seeing him as Lord Krishna and Hanumanji is seeing him as Lord Ram. He says, when my devotees fight amongst each other, that hurts me, that pains me, and I start bleeding like this. But when, you, when my devotees cooperate among each other, then that gives me the greatest joy. Haribo! <laughs> so, so, at that time, Lord Ram tells Hanumanji that, Oh, Hanuman, very soon this war is going to happen and between the Kauravas and the Pandavas. So, I want you to support the side. I want you to support Arjun. So, at that time, Hanumanji says, Oh, my dear Lord, Actually, if I am so, I am so powerful that if I just, if I just take, uh, if all the Kauravas are fighting, it might take me one moment to destroy all the Kauravas. Okay, so the war will be over in a flash of a moment. So, um, so, so then, uh, Hanumanji, he actually. Actually, there is a background for this. So when uh, Hanumanji was in, when Hanumanji goes to uh, Lanka, when Ravan has kidnapped Sita Maya at that time, Hanumanji tells Sita Maya that Maya, I can destroy the entire Ravana's army in just a flash. I am so powerful. So please give me the permission and then I can take you back immediately to uh, immediately to where Lord Ram is. So at that time, <laughs> and this is for my Prabhu Ramji. And then <laughs> at that time, Sita Maya says that, okay, no, Hanuman, I believe you that you can do that. But then in that case, I this will this will reduce the glory of my Lordship Lord Ram. Uh, I want my Lordship Lord Ram to come in. And plus, this will reduce your glory also because you have come in as a dut of Ram. But as a dut of Ram, if you come and if you destroy the Lanka kingdom, it would be a black mark on your history. So instead, let me suffer the pain in this kingdom of Ravana for some more time and let my Lord Ram come and let him kill this Ravana. So that was how Sita Maya wanted to protect Hanumanji and also wanted to uh, protect Lord Rama and glorify both of them. So there Hanumanji, back to this particular story, he says, so I am so powerful, I can do this. But, oh Arjun, let me do one thing. Let me, let me be as the victory, victory flag uh, in your chariot. My mark will be there. And, uh, and also, I will roar in the 
in when i roar in the battlefield at that time thousands of soldiers would be killed just by hearing that roar so and it did happen like that on the when arjun was arjun had taken a vow after his son abhimanyu was killed in the battlefield and he was primarily like this this was the killing of abhimanyu was architected by jayadrat king jayadrat on duryodhan's team so arjun took a vow that okay by tomorrow evening i will kill jayadrat and when arjun was chasing jayadrat duryodhan actually protected with hundreds of thousands of soldiers actually and at that time hanuman ji roared and by his loud roar thousands of soldiers were immediately killed okay it was clear in the way for arjun <laughs> so that is the glory of the devotees of lord that is the glory of hanuman ji and that is the glory of arjun hari bol <laughs> so we'll stop here shrimad bhagavad gita ki jai our devotees arjun and shri hanuman ji ki jai jagat guru shila prabhupad ki jai nitai gaur premanandi i want to just check if anyone has any questions or any comments or we can stop here i'll just pause stop the recording here